life do we see our Father in this limitless, unbounded way? I'm not sure that we're really capable of that. The best we can do probably is divide ourselves into two groups. And these groups are ones we laugh about very often, and, and it's the groups who see the glass is either half full or the glass is half empty. But you see, if we have a view of our Father that limits him, that is a belittling of his goodness of his grace, of his glory. And limiting him means that I think I can carry some of life's weight and responsibility on my own. I can't do that, and neither can you. And you see, God never meant for us to do that. Life will crush you and grind you up and spit you out. So by the end of this message, what all of us need to understand and comes to grip with is the best of our limited abilities doing the best that we can, we need to just see how full of grace and truth Jesus is. That was one of John's goals in writing his gospel. And Jesus is the inexhaustible well of truth and glory and grace. We cannot see him in a limited way because there is no end to God and all that he is. So if you will join with me in looking in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 14, and the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then it says, John bore witness about him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And then continuing, For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Now, let's take a little bit of time. And yes, we've been here before. This is not the first time we've talked about this incredible passage of Scripture. But it bears looking into repeatedly because the Word is alive sharper and powerful than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder between soul and spirit. And it says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So who is this Jesus? I'm amazed from time to time, and I had a conversation just in the last few days of someone being surprised to know that the scripture says Jesus is God. There's no telling who may listen to this. But Jesus is God. He is one with the Father. He is eternal. He was there before time began. He is the Word personified, the one without whom nothing was created. And the Word is God. He is the light of men and the only hope of men. And he put on flesh. He emptied himself according to Philippians and lived among us. And that is an amazing, incredibly awesome thought. And the phrase that we see here, dwelt among us, is the same idea that we have in the concept of the tabernacle. You see, in the Old Testament, God tabernacled with his people. He dwelt among them. And the tabernacle sat in the middle of the Jewish camp. God's presence and his power dwelt there. And the Jewish people could always look up and see the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire. And they knew that the presence of God was with them. And so what John is saying here is the tabernacle is among us. The word of God has put on flesh and he is here. Now, I've encouraged you many times to do your Bible study and your reading and look at different translations. And this is a fascinating time when that is very informative and insightful. If you look at the message translation, here's what you read of this verse. The word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. The word became flesh and lives down the street. He didn't come by himself. When you see his moving trucks moving into your neighborhood, what you are watching is load after load after truckload after truckload of the good things that he brings with him. Grace upon grace. Look back at the text. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And you see, when Jesus moves into our neighborhood, when the word puts on flesh and comes to reside on my street, he brings the fullness of grace and truth. And John is showing us that Jesus 
is the gospel. He is the good news of forgiveness and salvation. And you see, the gospel is the light who has shone in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome him. You see, this darkness is conquered by Christ. And I, fall, I find very often that lists are helpful, at least to me, to, to understand things. So if Jesus can't be conquered, then he is the conqueror, and we know that. So what did he conquer? He conquered death. He conquered sin. He conquered hell, the grave, empty religious rituals, my sins, and your sins. And you see, the light of the world has shined in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't have a clue what hit it. The word moving into our neighborhood full of grace and truth is cause for eternal joy and celebration. And you see, one of my favorite writers, D.A. Carson, wrote a book entitled The Difficult Doctrine of the Love of God. It's challenging for us to take our limited amount of, of gray matter and try to wrap it around a God who bestows inexhaustible, steadfast love on the sinful objects of his affection. And you see, I think John knew that. And what he's writing here helps us to understand. Mm -hmm.